His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, I welcome everyone to Sri Radha Gopinath's Sunday Festival. Today, Srila Prabhupada has showered extraordinary mercy upon all of us in the form of many of his most intimate loving associates and special guests. If I were to even attempt to speak a fraction of what is in my heart for each of these devotees, there would be no time for anyone to speak. And I know for sure that you want me to get this over with as soon as possible. So I will be very brief. We have His Holiness Niranjan Swami Maharaj, whose home in India is Radha Gopinath Temple by His causeless mercy upon us. Yesterday, he gave such a penetrating, extraordinary class that has deeply affected our hearts. One of the most loved devotees in our society for his honesty, his integrity, his humility, his incredible kirtans, his wonderful classes, and his great compassion upon everyone. Let us very enthusiastically welcome His Holiness Naranjan Swami Maharaj. <laughs> We also have Janani Vas Prabhu and Pankajangari Prabhu. Since they're identical twins, I will introduce them together. <laughs> what can I say? The purity of their hearts, the humility of their character, has deeply affected our whole society. I believe it was in 1971 that they went to Sri Mayapur Dham. Sri the Prabhupada appointed them to be in charge of the deity worship. They have been faithfully executing Guru Maharaja's instruction since that time. Despite glorious successes and intolerable crises that have taken place in Mayapur Dham, Janani Vas Prabhu and Pankajangari Prabhu have remained in the faithful service of Sri Sri Radha Madhava. In fact, there are many who consider these two brothers the most exemplary devotees in the entire world. And I am amongst them. So is Niranjan Swami. <laughs> and believe it or not, officially, they are the head pujaris of Sri Radha Gopinath Temple. Janani Vas Prabhu accepted this position years ago. And any deity worship um, decisions that are made must be with the blessings of Janani Vas Prabhu and Pankajangari Prabhu. 
led us. To sum up Janani Vas Prabhu and Pankajangari Prabhu, they simply love Krishna. I think everything else is included in that. They have very deep and wonderful ecstatic love for Krishna and for the Vaishnavas. Let us welcome them to Sri Radha Gopinath Temple. <laughs> And we have Lakshmi Moni Devi Prabhu, very, very senior disciple of Srila Prabhupada. She has been here many times. She is taking responsibility of one of the most successful schools for young devotee girls and the way she inspires them, encourages them, and trains them in the science of pure devotional service is amazing. How many children in your school? 20, How many of you feel fit to be the mother of 20 American and international teenage girls. Live in the same house with them day and night and make them blissful and happy. Let us welcome with great enthusiasm Lakshmi Mani Prabhu. And to my very great joy, we have with us for the first time Dina Tarani Devi Prabhu, who has been very, very senior disciple of Prabhupada, extraordinary good character. She's like a mother of the universe, especially to me. She has done so many various services, sacrifices in Prabhupada's mission over the years. And she's been living for many years, setting most exalted example of renounced ladies along with Yamuna Mataji and Sharanagati. Let us very enthusiastically welcome Dina Tarani Prabhu. And we have still with us Vishaka and Shamsundar Prabhu, who we, we have introduced many times. But let us just express our deep appreciation that they tolerate us day after day and continue to shower their blessings upon us. And we have from Sri Vrindavan Dham, two of the most wonderful exemplary Vrijbasis, both born raised in the dust of the cows of Braj. We have Ramesh Chandra Goswami, one of the head pujaris of the Krishna Balaram temple in the very house where Krishna and Balaram eternally reside on the top of the hill of Srinandagram Dam. And his daughter, Gita is with us also. And Madan Mohan Prijbasi from Koshi, who's been living for many years at Man Mandir in the Chiksholi region of Barasana, at Gabarvan. Madan Mohanji 
in the month of June, he happened to be in America when His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami Maharaj was in the last days of his Leela in this world. And by his kindness, along with Panditji and Narasingha Baba, they came. And when Madan Mohan, when he was singing so sweetly, Bhakti Tirtha Swami, who was on his deathbed, went into an ecstasy that no one has ever seen him before. He wasn't crying. He was wailing. Tears were pouring from his eyes. And he was just crying out loud for a half hour continuously as Madan Mohan Brijavasi was singing the sweet glories of Sri Sri Radha, Man Bihari Lal. He's one of the sweetest, most beautiful bhajan and kirtan singers that this world will ever know. Let us welcome, along with his two sons, Hare Krishna and Sri Krishna. <laughs> yes. Let us welcome Madan Mohan Prajpasi. And we also have my very old friend. Is Shelly here also? No. Huh? Anna. Oh, she's doing like that. Okay. You all know Gary, my old friend that I grew up with? This is his younger brother, Richard, who I also grew up with. And we were very, very close friends when we were young boys and teenagers. And Richard has come to India for the first time in his life. We've known each other and somehow remained in connection with each other all of these years. He's just a wonderful soul with very special spiritual interests as well. And I am so grateful that you have come. After years and years of inviting him, he has made his appearance. Let us very affectionately and enthusiastically welcome him to Radha Gopina. <laughs> Special guest, more than special. His Holiness Naranjan Swami Maharaja's elder sister. Known as Sandy Auntie. <laughs> so just, she has an all-attractive personality, just like her brother. And she has so much affection and love for our devotees. And our devotees have so much an affection and love for you. And so much gratitude that you have come. Let us welcome Sandy to Shirata Gopinath Temple. <laughs> And the leading preachers from Taiwan, disciples of His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj, very, very dear to his heart eternally, wonderful devotees. They have, Taiwan is not an easy place to teach people about love of God but they have been there for many years and have made 
tremendous efforts and wonderful successes in both Taiwan and China, communist China. Can you both stand up? Eka Chakra Prabhu and Janava Devi. Janava Devi, please stand up. Janava Devi is from China. Let us very sincerely welcome them to Shirada Gopinath. Today we also have, I believe, about 15 devotees from Moscow and other parts of Russia. But they're in another room hearing a simultaneous translation. But they hear us. Let us welcome them to Shirada. And now for the crescendo <laughs> of my introductions. The senior most amongst all of us. We have with us, once again after five years, Yamuna Devi Prabhu. She first met Srila Prabhupada in 1966 at 26 2nd Avenue in New York City. She came for her sister Janaki Prabhu's marriage to then Mukunda Prabhu, who is now Mukunda Goswami Maharaj. And at that time, she alone assisted Srila Prabhupada personally in cooking the entire marriage feast. And by that association with Srila Prabhupada, she gave her heart, her soul, her life to his loving service eternally. Along with Guru Das Prabhu, Sham Sundar Prabhu, Malati Prabhu, Mukunda Goswami and Janaki Prabhu, they started the first temple in San Francisco, the first temple in London. In fact, every morning we hear, hear her singing Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Pajami which was a record produced by George Harrison of the Beatles. One time, a man complained to Prabhupada about why we're listening to a woman singing every morning or greeting the deities to every temple worldwide by Prabhupada's order. But Srila Prabhupada's he compared her singing to a transcendental symphony beyond all material considerations. And therefore, it is an established tradition of ISKCON that in over 500 temples, we hear her singing every single day. I first met her at Cross Maidan in Bombay during the festival. And next, I met her in 1971. She was living at the Radha Damodar temple. She was at the first group of devotees to establish the ISKCON movement within India. I could speak for many hours but we want to hear her, her speak. But she, she has done so much to transform so many people's hearts over the decades. Prabhupada said that she had attained bhava, or love of Krishna. 
There wasn't many people Prabhupada said that about. And being taught cooking by Srila Prabhupada, she wanted to share it with the world. So she wrote a cookbook, Lord Krishna's Cuisine, and it won almost every international award as the cookbook of the year. And she's simply glorifying Krishna through, for, through whatever she does. I have been pleading with her to come for many years. And somehow, by Radha Gopinath's causeless mercy, she has made her appearance. And she refused to give class today. But due to the intense desire of all of us, she has surrendered. <laughs> so our speaker for today will be Yamuna Devi Prabhu. Let us very enthusiastically welcome her back to Sri Radha Gopinath Temple. Much louder, please. And just walked in is Braj Bihari Prabhu and Brinda, Ananda Brindavan Prabhu, who have come from Sri Brindavan Dham. Ananda Brindavan Prabhu Devi, she is the headmaster and principal of the Gurukul, the Bhaktivedanta Gurukul in Sri Brindavan Dham. And Brajbihari Prabhu, he does about everything. If there's any problem in ISKCON, the first people, the first thing people do is contact Brajbihari Prabhu. Very humble, very pure heart, very simple, very intelligent, very dedicated, and a wonderful friend. Let us welcome them to Sridhata Gopinath. And at this time, we sincerely request Yamuna Devi Prabhu to enlighten us. And if you finish by midnight, <laughs> it's all right.
Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tirahabana Chari Yamuna Tirahabana Chari Jaya Radha Mahadhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janna Bala Bhagiri Bora Dari Gopi Janna Bala Bhagiri Bora Dari Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Habana Chari Yamuna Tira Habana Chari Yamuna Tira Habana Chari Radha Gopinatha, Radha Gopinatha, Radhe, Radhe. Radha Radha Gopinatha, Radha Gopinatha, Radha Gopinatha, Radhe, Radhe. Jaya Prabhu Padha, Prabhu Padha, Prabhu Padha Srila, Prabhu Padha. Vanchikal Patru Vaishya Kripa Sintu Vaivacha Patitanam Pravane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namo Namaha Dear respected Maharajas Transcendental Budget Dam residents, glorious Chaupati devotees, all of the guests that are here.
here in Chaupati, some for the first time. I offer you all my deepest respects. I'm really overwhelmed when I come to Chaupati because there's no place like it on the planet, maybe in all the three worlds. Radha Gopinath, who reside here, are worshipped so very beautifully. Since I was here five years ago, their lordships have become more effulgent and more glorious. Now I, need, I see new Archivigraha here, Lalita and Vishaka, and the other Sakis. When I first came in to pay Dandavats to Srila Prabhupada, um, chills just um, overcame me with, with uh, emotion. How oh, much pleased he must be. Um, Radhanath Swami, who has the ability to try to honor every living jiva soul that he comes in contact with, uh, captured my heart some many years ago. And over the years, Um, I felt such a deep, deep, deep sense of gratitude to Lord Krishna for allowing me to have his company in this lifetime. I am so indebted to him for that. And every time I have the good fortune to be in his association, I more deeply appreciate uh, the literatures that have been given to us by our great Vaishnava charges. I more appreciate my spiritual master and I more appreciate all of you. So it is with really great uh, deep sense of gratitude that I've been allowed for the second time to have this Chaupati experience. I was so moved by it the first time I came here that I thought I, didn't, I wouldn't ever come back here. It was so overwhelming. But it's by um, Radhanath Swami's mercy and Krishna Chandra Prabhu's mercy and the mercy of so many of you that I've been allowed a second opportunity. And I remember the first time I was asked to speak here. I have to tell you, I don't speak in public. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada um, also wouldn't, uh, didn't push me to speak because I'm not a good speaker. But um, Radhana Swami has asked me to say something about Prabhupada. So you have so many devotees, uh, old and very senior to me, who could speak so much very wonderful Prabhupada Gita. And uh, so I asked him, could you be more specific what maybe I might try to speak on? So first time was Rabba's mercy, which is a very general topic. And a disciple can take that so many different places. So with this one, uh, for some reason, I. I was thinking to bring up just the simple topic of Srila Prabhupada in the kitchen and us in the kitchen. And maybe to, to take a, a little glance, historical glance, at one relationship of one disciple uh, with Srila Prabhupada in the kitchen and also to, to meditate a little bit about how Srila Prabhupada treats, taught each of his disciples in an individual way. And with some disciples, he gave more instruction 
and more detailed instruction and more detailed criticism. And with some, he was extremely lenient. And whatever mistakes were made in the service of Lord Krishna, um, he was very gentle in his chastisement. So from the very first day that I had any association with Prabhupada in the kitchen, Srila Prabhupada was a little, not very lenient with me. So I thought to ask you first a question, all of you, and I know it's a very big audience, but I would like for any of you to spontaneously respond to the question. In your experience of Krishna consciousness, name something in relationship to Prabhupada and cooking that you have been taught is important. In other words, to cook in spiritual consciousness, what is an important element? Please speak out loudly, just answer. Cleanliness. Cleanliness. Thank you. Another one. Excuse me? Remember who you are cooking for. Again. What? Punctuality. What else? Devotion. Devotion. That's like remember who we're cooking for in another way. Another quality? Louder? Yes, chanting, attentive chanting, attentive chanting. What else? Don't waste anything, excellent. What else? I can't hear. All right. Don't talk while cooking. Don't talk while cooking, thank you. Don't speculate. Hare Krishna, Brahmacharya <laughs> So I, I'll tell you, if I try to synthesize down to three things, those three things are cleanliness, quality, and purity. So each of our great sampradayas, the, mm, each temple in our sampradaya, and all of our different gurus may stress things differently. But if I look back on the short 11 years that I had of Srila Prabhupada's company in the kitchen, those three things come to the surface as being the cream. You have to imagine the time, if we go back decades, from 2006 to 96 to 86 to 76 to 66. I met my spiritual master when I was 25 years old. I was from a, a family who knew nothing about Krishna, had never heard the name Krishna, had never heard the word Vaishnavism with true Mletra qualities. And I went to my younger sister's wedding, just like you are attending an incredible wedding in two days. So I went to my younger sister's wedding. And the day that I arrived for the wedding, I went to a luncheon and met Srila Prabhupada. It was a luncheon that Srila Prabhupada cooked by his own hand and served to his first disciples. And it was my first taste of Krishna Prasadam. And after that meal, Srila Prabhupada said, So, what is your name? And I told him, Where are you from? 3,000 miles away. When is the rest of the family coming for the wedding? 
I'm the only one coming, Swamiji. Oh, this is so unusual, he said. This is very unusual in India. The family of the bride makes great arrangements for a wedding. So today when I asked um, Krishna Chandra and his wife, Adapriya, how many people will be coming to the wedding? She said, there'll be maybe three, four thousand intimate guests. So you can see the, the setting, the scenario. So I said, I'm the only one coming. He said, never mind, you can help me cook. So I thought, oh, this is going to be an interesting experience. He said, can you come tomorrow morning? Yes, Swamiji, I can come. So I came the next day in a little blue mini skirt and a t-shirt into Srila Prabhupada's quarters. And he sat me down in front of a five pound bag of moida and two pounds of butter, unsalted, not even ghee, pitcher of water. And he said, so can you make a medium hard dough? And I said, Swamiji, what do you mean? I said, you mean chou en flow do? You mean pâté brisé? What kind of dough? So he really looked at me quizzically and he raised his eyebrow and he said, any child five years old in India can do this. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> Is it 25? Is it you're 25 and you can't make a medium hard dough? Let me show you. So from this very moment, Srila Prabhupada grabbed my invisible Sika <laughs> and he began to drag me to Krishna. And you know, if you can just imagine the strangeness of this, but I remember his hands he took the flour, he put it into a, a bowl. His hands began to work magic. Very quickly he made uh, a kachori dough. Now all of you know that kachori are some of the most challenging pastries in our line to master and do well. So my first job in, as Prabhupada's <laughs> aspiring assistant was to make kachoris for 40 people alone. And in that first day that I cooked for Sh with Srila Prabhupada, there was a small little galley kitchen. Galley kitchen means on one side there's a counter and on another side there's a counter. And Srila Prabhupada in the period of six hours made 14 dishes for 40 people alone, plus fried all of the kachoris. And in the course of that, for about oh, two, three hours, I made, tried to make and shape kachoris. Finally, I said to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, may I have a glass of water? And he peeked his head around from the kitchen and he said, go wash your hands. So I thought that was a very strange thing, but I went and washed my hands. And then his first instruction to me was to explain when we're cooking for Krishna, it is different than any other cooking. When we are cooking for Krishna, we are cooking for the pleasure of Krishna. We do not use our senses to enjoy the experience we only think of the pleasure of Krishna. First instruction I get. All right, thank you Swamiji, I will try to do that. 